Hey Google, turn on more light. There we go, that's better. Hey everybody, Jason here, long time no see. Uh, I'm gonna make time to do a video today. I have been completely, totally buried, which can be a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing. Nevertheless, I still love my job. I'm still sitting here doing it. And today I'm gonna share something with you. I have an iPhone 10. I already have the PCB out of this thing and I was waiting for chips to arrive so I could do a repair on this. Now, this is a board that has some really funky charging issues. I think the, the most it would draw is 90 milliamps. So let's dig in on this thing. And also I'm gonna show you all how I make opening and closing the iPhone 10 PCB really, really easy. I've seen a lot of comments and things from people that are uh, really turned off by this new board design. And for me, this has been my saving grace. You know, the iPhone 7 has been a real killer, but the iPhone 10 is like bringing back my faith in repair altogether. And my success rate on these, if you send this here for data recovery or for repair, is upwards of like 95%. Almost every single iPhone 10 that hits the bench is successful. That is, unless you send it here completely mutilated. So, step one for this repair is going to be dismantling the PCB. As you'll see, I've already peeled the stickers off of this. I did this uh, a few days ago when I realized I didn't have what I needed here to fix it. So I'm gonna put this into a board heater. My pins are a little bit gummed up. It'll go in there and just gotta push real hard. My very next step is to thread us a handle into the top of the board. I like to put a screw right here and use this to hold on to. There we go, we've got our handle threaded in. Oh, and let's not forget, I did this on a 10S today. Let's not forget our little sticker. All right, there we go, we've got our handle threaded in, we've got our sticker cut, and we are ready to uh, power on the heater. I'm gonna let this sit here for a little bit and warm up, and then I'm gonna come back to this video whenever we're ready to take it apart. Almost there. Dun, 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 dun. All right, looking good on this side. Looking good on that side. We're melted out at our tongue. All right, everything is good to go. Now I'm gonna use a pair of tweezers here and I'm gonna grab right under this screw we put in here to be used as a handle. Nice and firm and just pick it up. There we go. Now, it is excruciatingly, excruciatingly important to take this apart without disturbing the factory alloy. And I'm gonna go ahead, while this cools off, I'm gonna show you why. Let's go ahead and remove our handle. We're not gonna need that anymore. If you'll have a look at these pads, you will see that most of these are just normal solder. This is solder, 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 but this one is flat. It's got a, a flat spot on top of it. And if you look at this, these flat ones, these are actually little discs. They're, they're spacers. And surface tension holds them in place on these ground pads. So if we look along the ground pads, there's a spacer. And then this is just normal low melt solder, 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 solder. Oh, spacer right here. That's a spacer. And if you look around the board here, these spacers are just spaced periodically around the board. So Apple uses force to put these boards back together and I always assumed they had somewhat of a finger-like jig that went into these boards that kept the spacing right, but that's not that, that that's not the case at all. They're using these little disc spacers that are invisible, damn near invisible to even the microscope. These spacers are why I've been able to get away with clamping so many of these boards back together and it doesn't, it doesn't cause any bridging, it doesn't cause any shorting, and that's because these boards were designed to be clamped together. Now, this repair, remember, this is actually a repair. This board is not charging and to solve this on this one, I believe we're gonna get away with replacing our beloved Texas Instruments SN2501 whatchamadigger down here. Now, on previous models, charging failures, they were largely caused by TriStar ICs, but what I've been finding out on these newer model phones, it's usually the Tigris IC. So, let's dig in and do this one. The very first thing that we're gonna do here is we are going to remove the old chip from the board. I'm gonna orientate it just like that. 
Let's fire up the hot air and start warming this bad boy up. The solder you will see here along the left hand side, this is low melt. So we're going to see it melt first. Now I'm just going to kind of gradually start warming this board up. There we go. See all the solder along the left side there already melted? Now for most BGAs, I use drop technique. I hold up the entire board by the chip and I begin heating it until the board falls away, just like that. So there we have removed the IC. Now that we're done dropping the board, let's go ahead and put it into a holder. Being very careful not to disturb that alloy or those spacers. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get this ready for a new IC. Now, this is lead-free solder on the board. I don't like lead-free solder. It takes a lot of heat to melt it. It gets brittle and cracks, and it should have never been used in mobile applications. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to blob some leaded solder onto my micro pencil and I'm holding the board temperature up with my left hand and I'm going to start trying to mop up some of this old nasty lead free solder with my right hand. What in the, Man these things take a lot of heat for being so, so thin. Now, if you're having trouble getting these to beat up like I am right here, it's just going to be because of heat. You need more heat, flux. See how it started to blob all over everything like that? I just heat the board up a little farther and it'll quit doing it. There we go. Let's add some fresh flux and maybe a tiny bit more leaded solder. You have to be really careful not to disturb the joints around the outside of the board because we don't want to... We don't want to have to deal with that. Can literally do these repairs, slap these phones back together, and they don't come back. It's not like an iPhone 7 that's going to come back to you boot looping a month later for something that's not your fault. These iPhone 10s are really, I like them. They're very stable, and they pay my bills. There we go. Okay. And now, not the cleanest job in the world, but it'll work. Ow, I shot my finger with hot air. All right, we're going to call that good enough for now. We don't have any huge blobs sticking up. Oh, yeah, we do. We got one little huge blob sticking up right there. Let's get rid of that huge ass blob of solder. There we are. Okay. It's spectacular. We're going to be fine. Now, I have brand new ICs with brand new balls on them, but the balls that are on those ICs, that is lead-free solder, takes a ton of heat to melt, and I'm working on this teeny, teensy, tiny little board, and I don't want to have to use that much heat. So, um, let's grab our... I lost them. All right, so let's get us a brand spanking new Tigers 2 IC. Oh, look at the static holding it to the package. There we go. Let's move this over to reballing station B here. Man, I almost hate to disturb it. I mean, look at it. 
That is a beautiful, brand spanking new Tiger Size C with symmetrical, non-hairy balls. Let's put some new ones on it because we don't want lead-free solder. I tell you what, if somebody begins selling brand spanking new ICs that come pre-balled with leaded and they use it as a selling point, I'll buy them. Maybe. Don't, don't hold me to that. It's selling me some junk. All right, so... Oh my gosh, my nerves almost will not let me do this video today, guys. I haven't been on YouTube in months, well, over a month, and now I'm doing a video, and it's like, oh. All right, so let's get some flux on here. There we go. Now, I'm going to blob some leaded solder all over my 2032 micro pencil with the 0.1 millimeter, millimeter conical tip. Links are in the description. And I'm going to do this a couple of times on here because I just, uh, I don't like lead-free solder. Come on. Come on, don't overheat that chip. Okay, I'm gonna flux it, do it once more. baby. YouTube made me choose if this channel was going to be for kids or not. Took a lot of thinking, but I decided that it wasn't going to be a children's channel. Hope you all agree. All right, let's clean our flux off of here and get some brand spanking new balls on it. I like having a couple little humps left over. That helps to hold the stencil in place. And if you're just, just just in case you're curious as to how big this chip is, here's a standard issue dinner toothpick. That's how big of a thing we're dealing with here. It's puny. All right, let's grab us a stencil here. Yeah, only the best stencils here in the STS shop. Now for this reball here, I'm going to go ahead and use. Let's just use the iPhone 7 Audio IC cut out. How about that? I've got stencils laying around here for iPhone 10, but I've just been too uh, too lazy to dig them out. So here we go. The iPhone 7 Audio IC. Hmm. Maybe I shouldn't be being cocky right now. This don't feel good. Okay. Let's add some. 6337 leaded solder paste. Preferably some of the dry crap off the end of my nozzle. There we go. Ooh, hairs and everything. Oh yeah, some nice hairy paste. Okay, now let's smear this down in there real good. I'm having trouble. It's not getting in all the holes. All right, there it goes. I really don't like that. Let's add a little bit more. There we go. That's a little bit wetter. I prefer to do this with some fairly dry paste. Yeah, that's actually a lot wetter. Whoops. Okay, so that does look pretty good, semi-good. I don't need them to be perfect. This can be somewhat forgiving. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to begin applying some heat to this. And we're going to slowly, I'm going to try to warm up a lot of the stencil and then sort of keep coming back to this spot. This is all happening very quickly. I'm almost up to temp, I think. All right, I'm gonna try to start at the bottom right corner here. Ooh, too fast. And slowly raise this up. Oh wow, what a crappy reball, ugh. Man, that's a bad job. See, I got solder blobbing out all over the place. 
Now I'm going to show you how to save a really crappy reball job. We're going to take our handy dandy little hockey puck or hockey stick tool for cleaning off uh, glue and we're going to use this to um, forcefully fix this reball job. So I'm going to take this little tool I'm going to cut it right across the top of these here balls. There we are. Ooh, baby. Just cut them off nice and flat. There we go. As much as I like would like to have done a perfect reball on my very first video back after like a month, this is going to be crude, but it's still going to work. Heat it back up once more to make balls. Damn, am I going to have to trim that one more time? Nah, we're going to be okay. All right. I totally missed the whole chip. I'm an idiot. So let's uh, let's clean this up here. I'm going to edit that out so nobody will know I'm such an idiot. Let's do this once more. There we are. How am I ever supposed to look smart if I keep doing stupid crap like that? Okay, there we go. Let's get some solder paste down in here again. Smear it in here. And let's reball with the reball. All right. This time, let's get all of the pins. A little fast that time, but it's uniform. All right, let's get this stencil off of here. Have a look at what sort of a mess I didn't make. Oh yeah, that's a nice reball. Okay. So there we are. We have some beautiful, non-hairy, leaded, symmetrical balls. So we have our chip reballed. We have our site cleaned up, ready for a new chip. So let's grab our newly reballed chip from right here. And we're going to sit this sort of in place on the board where I can find it. There we go. Where's our dot? Huh. I honestly cannot tell. So let's use a little dot of alcohol. I guess I could just look at one of the other chips. I should do that instead. There we go, now we can see it. So this chip, it's gonna sit on the board just like that. Let's add a smidgen of fresh flux. All right, that's, uh, oh, oh, oh. Okay, there's a smidgen. Now on this, this IC, 
it is kind of helpful to know that it lines up at the bottom with our little MOSFET here. So we know that as far as alignment goes, it'll be right about there. So that is pretty dang close. Let's see. Whoops. All right, we're looking good there. Let's slowly start to warm this up, and I'm going to warm it up until it f either falls onto the PCB or blows off of the bench. Are you watching? Any minute, it's going to fall. Whoops. Blew off of the bench. Seriously? I'm a total failure. I'm getting hungry. It'll be easier this time since it's all lead free, but damn. So let's get us a blob of flux on here. And we're going to kind of mop up all of the lead free solder. There we are. Let's do this once more. Baby. All right, let's do it again. This time without botching it, shall we? All right, this time let's go ahead and hold on to it for a little while. All right, let's go ahead and warm this up. Just till it starts bubbling. Whoops. There we are. I might have just botched it again. And let's go ahead and float this down onto the board. Are you ready? It's going to fall. This time not going to blow away, right? Mofo. Ooh, baby. There we go. Now that looks nice and pretty and I'm confident that it will work. Okay, so let's go ahead and clean up as much of my flux off of here as I can. Not nearly as picky about flux as I used to be. Plus, we're just going to be putting flux back on it here in a minute. And see, these things are literally covered in flux from the factory. I mean, look at it. It's just soaked. So we're not going to spend a bunch of time nitpicking. When you know, Apple didn't feel like that was necessary. Please don't tell my customer, but I've put the tiniest nick in the top of that IC. I think it'll be fine. 
let's do one more thing in terms of nitpicking. I believe I bumped a pad and it no longer has any solder on it. So let's get some low melt on this thing. Let's get this one pad here. I'm not sure what it is, but it'll be quicker to just put some low melt on it than it is to figure out what it is. So I'm currently flooding my micro pencil with low melt, a lot of it. And I'll come back and dip it in just a dainty little bit of it. And we're going to touch this pad under the microscope. There we go. We're just going to fluff it up with a little bit of low melt. I think I better do a tiny bit more than that. Nice little dome on top so that it matches the rest of them. If there's any ground pads that have kind of accidentally flattened out by my screwing around over here, that's okay. We'll just leave them. Ooh. Ooh, that's beautiful. All right, now it looks just like the rest of them. And that is my preferred way to reball the iPhone 10 PCB. And that's not at all. Don't reball it. Just take it apart nice and carefully. All right, I better hook this to a DC power supply and see what sort of current draw we get. So let's get the power supply on the screen. Let's go ahead and hook up our iPhone 10 lead, which is, oh, that's a seven. Mine's getting a little wonky, but it'll still work for this. All right, no weird loads. Let's push the power button. 80 milliamps. Why is it hanging at 80 milliamps? Hmm. Well, let's see what it draws in terms of battery charging. This might be in DFU mode. Let's go ahead and slap it in a test housing. There we go, got a dock flex hooked up. Let's get a battery hooked up. So that's dock flex, battery, and now I'm gonna plug in a charger. 60 milliamps, 70 milliamps, 400 milliamps. You know, that actually looks promising for a flat dead battery. So let's see, you know, let's just hook up a display and a power supply here and try this again. Maybe this is like some software version that just drops in the DFU mode without the bottom board. And nothing would surprise me at this point. We are not attempting to boot. All right, let's go ahead and stick our boards back together. I will add some fresh flux to the bottom board. And also we're going to correct some of these spacers. If there is any that needs corrected, let's just buzz across here. Everything looks good so far. You know, you can see this is a spacer. These are solder pads, solder. I think we got a spacer in there. Spacer there. We can probably find one of these standing up that I can show you. Oh, here we go. Right there. That's a spacer. So I'm gonna to try to take my blade here and we're just gonna lay this right back down. See? There we go. All right, let's get some flesh fresh flux on here and get this board put back together. So we're going to start by lining this up on here. There we go. Actually, I think I just dropped it right in place. Let's see what the microscope says. Hmm, 
pretty damn close. All right, we are now fairly well lined up. And surface tension will also do a fair amount of pulling them back into place. And um, from there, we're just going to turn on the burner and let this thing settle down on here. And hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll just settle it down on there and not have to do any clamping. So we're going to let this uh, warm up, and I'll come back to the video here in a minute. Okay, we're floating back here. I'm going to undo our latches here because I think that kind of sometimes puts a bow in the middle of the board. Now we're definitely floaty back here. Now we're floaty out front, but there's a significant gap out there. Floaty here. All right, while this is molten, let's look at it under the microscope. I wanna see how our alignment is. Uh, I think we're out. By a little bit on top here. So I'm going to take and push this a very small amount. Ready? Here we go. There we go. Everything looks good all the way around with the exception of it possibly being bowed up here at the top. All right, let's turn it off and let it cool. So if there is any sort of uh, separation or anything that's, you know, looks like the board's warped or anything, I'm going to clamp it and then we're going to let it, you know, then we're going to heat it up again. All right. It should be just about cooled off. I like to take it out of my jig here while it's still hot. That way it doesn't get stuck to any goo. And that also helps it to cool a little bit faster. Okay, let's right away have a look at our balls and see if we're going to have to heat this back up. If so, I won't let it cool all the way down. Well, you know, this is looking pretty dang good on the back side. And it wound up, eh, we're looking okay on the front side. okay on the front side but it's still pulled apart quite a ways and I'm just I'm not really comfortable with that I'm not comfortable with that at all now on the iPhone 10 those balls out there are ground but on the 10s um, it's different so we're gonna put this back down into my holder now I'm gonna use a very sophisticated tool um, this is a tool that I purchased uh, it cost I mean it was it was literally hundreds of dollars and this is a tool that I purchased just for this job and we're going to start by laying the first half of the tool right here. There we go. Very, very, very high-end equipment here. And now um, the other tool I spent much more on. This was at least $1,000. And we're going to take this right up in here like this and clamp it like that. And then I'm going to use a tool that was donated to me by Union Repair. I still use the wire off of it, but I don't actually use the dispenser. And we are actually going to lay that right here to hold the tongue down. So there's really, honestly, there's really nothing like having the right types of tools for the job. So we are going to let this heat up until the solder is all molten once again. There we are. We are all the way up to temp here. Let's go ahead and turn our burner off and we're going to let that cool under pressure. All right, this is pretty well cooled down. We're going to begin removing our weights. Let's re remove my much criticized clamp. We had quite a few people back in the beginning that told me, you can't clamp them down like that. You know what? They never came back for warranty. And that's largely to thank those spacers for. Those spacers are awesome. So if you do have to do a full reball, it's probably worth your time to transfer those spacers over. All right, here we are looking at the board again. Much nicer, now that we've stuck that down at the top a lot better. And I will probably go along here, along the edges of here, and clean some of my flux off. Um, 
just to make it a little, little bit less sticky. All right, let's stick it in a test housing. There we are. And I'm just curious to see what our charging current is. There we go. Hook up our dock flex. Let's hook up a screen assembly. Touch, image, battery. All right, drum roll please. We are getting 140 milliamps, 670. Apple logo. Yes! Done, we're done. End of the video, done. Now what I wanna see is that after it boots, got a charge connect, yay! I wanna see that after it boots, I'm drawing a normal amount in charging current. And as you can see right now, just so you'll believe me, we are drawing one amp of charging current. Now for me, that is completely acceptable because this is a phone that would not charge one bit. It was drawing like 90 milliamps of charging current. Now, if I switch cables and charge setups here, I can probably get this to charge more. I mean, charge a little bit faster, but as it is right now, we are drawing normal charging current. And this repair is going to be successful. What's our percentage now? All right, 50%, we are raising battery percentage. We have a pass, wait, we have no passcode. I'm gonna go in here, we're gonna check and make sure that uh, Wi-Fi is alive and able, ready to enable. We have working Wi-Fi, but uh, no antennas. We have baseband showing up, MAC addresses are showing up. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit of cleaning and a, and a full test on this, but uh, guys, this is a successful repair and also going to be the end of this video. I do thank you all for watching and I will see you next time. Have a good day, everybody. This right here is a spacer. So if we touch that pad, see how surface tension holds it in place? Spacer, right there. Okay, Google, turn on all the lights.